Welcome to the video. Today, we're going to talk about the day before, which is currently sitting at a 16% overwhelmingly negative review score with 12,535 reviews. That's actually gone up by 3% since earlier today, which is a little bit... I don't know. How's that happened? How's that gone up by 3% in a positive way? Hmm. Anyway, the game itself, let's talk about it. I did about four hours with Helkiana last night. We couldn't play together because there weren't enough servers. You'd think being the number one wishlisted game on Steam, they'd have, they'd have come prepared. So, following on from my previous day before video, where I was trying to be a bit more positive, everybody else is super negative. So I was trying to take a bit of a different point of view on it. And I went in the stream with the same kind of attitude. I wanted to be a bit more positive and get a good feedback for the gameplay and things like that. And this is the first thing that happened to me as I spawned in. Voice acting is actually not that bad. Not that dude, at least. So we'll see. Okay. <laughs> I got out, out of bed and then I got. What? I got teleported. What? what? <laughs> Like, what is that? I got that? out of bed and died! <laughs> <laughs> you died? Now, how Kiana didn't have exactly the same experience as me, but we both got soft locked. We had to delete our character, create a new one, but by this time, those servers that were there were all full, and the menu system is terrible. Always putting you at the top of the server list where all the servers are full, and having to mouse wheel all the way to the bottom to find, hopefully, a server with space. But you never really know, and there is no queue system, so it's the luck of the draw. However, as of the making of this video, they have actually released an update, and it removes all full servers from showing on the server list, giving you, hopefully, a better chance of joining a server. Apparently, there is a party system you can use once you're both in the same server, and everything worked okay, and you got past the soft lock that we had, but sadly, we haven't got to try that just yet. But with all that said, it was shortly after this that we all realized this is not an MMO open world survival game. This is an extraction shooter. And then I was being told through our chat that all of the videos showing that it was an open world MMO survival game were being deleted. I don't know if this is true. I was streaming at the time. This is just what we were being told through chat. But it's a good job. I do keep a backup of all of their videos, just in case something like this did happen. Welcome to the short gameplay demonstration trailer for The Day Before an upcoming open-world multiplayer survival game. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but from a consumer's standpoint, false advertising is, is a really bad thing to do. And that's what it's looking like Mytona and Fantastic have done here. I'm not saying they have, but from an uneducated man like myself, it's sure as hell what it looks like. Now, regardless of all of this, what does the actual gameplay feel like? How does it play as an extraction shooter? Forget that we know all of the controversies and drama from Fantastic and Mytona. We're going in blind. We don't know any of that. What's the gameplay like? So once you get past a worryingly long intro sequence and tutorial with your traders and talking to different NPCs, which I was a little bit concerned was going to take us over the two hours on its own to refund the game. Luckily, it doesn't. We can then leave Woodbury the safe area and go into the extraction zone or we can teleport to our private plot our, our little base that we can make which is pretty cool in itself but they're not connected it's not an open world like i've said before it's all separate little areas now the extraction map itself for pvp is quite large but one very worrying thing that was brought up to me early on in the stream was the gunshots we were hearing quite often were all ambient sounds not actual player shots and you could quite easily distinguish between these quieter ambient gunshots and an actual player because they were a hell of a lot louder when it comes from a player. Which is a really weird choice to add gunshot sounds as an ambient because if you're going in for PvP like a lot of us do, you're going to run towards those gunshots and you're never going to find anybody. Which I did experiment with and I couldn't find somebody. I only found somebody by accident. Which again, to find somebody exactly, their footsteps are so confusing. Uh, somebody sounded like they were right next to me. They were down the road, like 100 yards. But regardless of the footsteps, I was inside the bank and I heard somebody approaching. I saw the tip of their gun come through the door, but they must have noticed me with the third-person camera. Yeah, it's third-person only. And then they booked it. 
I probably followed maybe a second later from this footage here, and they were nowhere to be seen. I even checked right where they were first off. Uh, this is Falcon from the future here. Uh, I didn't notice this guy because he was crouch sliding uh, uh, at the edge of my uh, peripheral here, as you can see. So no footsteps, and he was sliding kind of at the edge of my screen. So ignore what I'm about to say, but still, I present to you Exhibit A what actually happened at this point but i did Where'd notice them eventually running across the road i followed them pumped a few shots in the back and went into chase mode uh, they were hiding behind a car healing i pumped them in the face and i dropped dead there was another instance where there was a guy looked like he just had a pvp encounter was looting a player i ran across he must have obviously heard me even though the footsteps are inconsistent but his animations weren't telling i couldn't tell what he was doing and he kind of floated and turned around with no animation. And I dropped dead. Quick, 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 quick! What? Those were my only two deaths, though. My other PvP encounters were quite enjoyable. I, I won those fights. And they felt satisfying. That must be real shots. Yeah, the real shots were a hell of a lot louder. I think there's like a, an alarm from a shop or something. Fuck! I got zombies on me and a player! Oh no. My backpack is full. I have loads of random shit. And I'll leave that. I killed the player. Though chat did point something else out. That the recoil doesn't look real. And under testing, it looks like the bullets do not deviate under heavy, quick fire. The gun moves, but the bullets don't. So there's actually no physical recoil, just an animation going up and down. At least that was the experience with that particular gun I tested with. Fuck off. I'm not gonna have time. Stressful, stressful. As for survival mechanics, there is a weight system. So the more loot you're carrying or the better gear you've got, the more you'll weigh and the less stamina you'll have or you'll run out of stamina quicker. There is also food and hydration you've got to keep an eye on. Otherwise, you will run out of stamina quicker or your stamina bar will reduce in size. Those things seem to work as intended. The zombies, though, seemed okay from my first game uh, in extraction mode. There were quite a few. Every kind of 100 yards or so, there'd be a zombie or two. But the more games I had, it seemed the less zombies were in the match. And one game, I ran around for a good 20 minutes and I didn't see a single zombie until suddenly a heavy tank zombie wearing SWAT gear and a helmet ran at me. And that was the first zombie I saw for like 20 minutes of the match running around looting. So there's none of those hordes or scary zombies. They're, they're literally no threat whatsoever, the zombies. Even when I did have that tank zombie chasing me, I just kited him around, pumped some shots into him, kept walking, reloading. He couldn't hit me. Rinse and repeat. And then I got all the loot. Visually, I can't really complain about the game. It does look nice. They've done a good job building out the city. And that's probably the best thing about the game is the visuals. Uh, Performance-wise, I was getting about 100 FPS, 90 to 100 all the time. It had little micro stutters here and there but for the most part 90 to 100 fps on maximum settings which they call fantastic but i'm fairly certain they mention they're not using assets from the marketplace and there's quite a lot of assets from the marketplace which is nothing wrong with that i'm building a game and i'm using assets from our marketplace uh, but you've got to disclose all of this to your consumers and 
community and things like that, it, you don't hide these things. Just like you don't hide a sudden genre change on day of release. It, you just don't do it. You, you say these things way ahead of time and let people know what they're pop paying and buying into. Anyway, I'm rambling on. I believe there's three actual extraction points on the extraction map. Uh, they are the same every time and they're the same for every person in the match. So the probability of them being heavily camped or you're running into other players and dying right at the extract are extremely high and just bad game design that they, that should be random for each person. So there's a random chance that you're going to run into people, not a definite chance of running in, into people right at the exit. And then if you do make it out successfully and uh, you've got all your loot that you've looted, you can sell them at the traders. You can hand in quests that you've gained from your PDA system and anything you do sell with the traders, you get Woodbury coins. And lucky for me, my first extraction, I killed somebody and they didn't put their Woodbury coins in the storage. So look who got rich. Whoa, don't aim at me. Fucking, what the heck? Woo, we're rolling in it, boys. I just murdered a man and I liked it. He had his, he had his spawn money on him. Sadly though, not rich enough as the first house that you can buy after your tent is 1.6 million. The next house after that is 2 million. And cars, well, they're, they're 2 million also. So how long it would take you to get 2 million Woodbury coins together if you didn't forget to take them out of your backpack and put them back in your storage box before you went into PvP and didn't lose them all? I couldn't tell you. So in summary, the zombies are not really a threat. PvP is very dubious and hit and miss of whether you're actually going to win the fight through no fault of your own or lose. Um, it's just totally random. Uh, the recoil is iffy at the very least. Players did seem to die really quick to headshots. Zombies took bloody forever to kill with headshots. If there was more zombies and uh, one headshot or two headshots killed them, it'd be okay. But one every square mile by the end of my play session, th there was no threat. What the fuck? No party system before joining a server and no matchmaking or queue system to join an actual server makes it a ball ache just to play the game from the get-go. All of this for $40 or £33.50, which is a hefty price for an early access game. But I'll repeat, if you ignored all the controversies and the sudden genre change on day of release and just went in blind, you probably think this was a quite a competent early access game. There's been far worse released into early access, that's for sure. But knowing what my toner and Fantastic have done in the past, and to be honest, I thought it couldn't get any worse, and then they, they did what they've done on launch day. I was at a loss for words for a while on stream. I just couldn't fathom it, and I tried my best to be nice. And by the end of it, I just wanted to throw my PC out the window. Now we're gaming! Just thinking about it now, I'm not sure if I'm having a stroke or not. I, I'm so baffled at how they can do what they've done. The extraction switch has been a thing for a while, I believe, that it's got to have been. So they've just they've just been sitting on it until launch day and it was a surprise. You're not getting what you paid for, Excuse me. kind of thing. Uh, we didn't know until we actually bought it and played that it that it was an extraction shooter. It, bo it boggles the mind. I don't I don't know why you would do this. Um, communications and marketing has just been totally strange since the beginning with with Fantastic. I really don't know. And of course, I've left a review on Steam with my summarized thoughts there. Just a quick few sentences. Pretty much what this video says. Uh, hopefully it will help people. I've not refunded it yet because I will keep an eye on if they actually fix anything and report in the future. Um, I want them to make a good game. Hopefully they can turn it around and do a No Man's Sky maybe. Uh, I highly doubt it. But, you know, we've, we've been wrong before. Have we? Well, we've not been wrong about the day before, but I'm sure something else we've been wrong about. But yeah, that's pretty much my experience in a nutshell. Uh, I'll keep you updated if if they do do big fixes and we get hordes suddenly and other things work with PvP and you don't have uh, people with massive heads across the street uh, and you just get killed from, from nowhere. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Did you buy the game expecting an open world survival MMO and got a mediocre extraction shooter in early access? Are we going to continue to buy games that have severe red flags? Probably. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to continue to see the content I create. Most of all, thank you for watching, and I'll see you peeps next time.